Yes, and welcome back. This is Islandish Podcast, and we are here with episode number three. And I have a very special guest in the building, as always, Mr. 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 CEO and founder of the King and Queens Project, Mr. Daryl Stubbs. Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for coming on the show. And thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Now, Daryl, I must give you your kudos, your tops, tap, tip my hat off to you for keeping pageantry and something that I love so much alive here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and in the Bahamas on the whole. So before we dive too deep into that, tell my listeners and my viewers a little bit about who you are, what you do exactly, and what is the King and Queens Project. So, hello <laughs> to all of our listeners and viewers. Yes. I really don't know how she got me here, but I am here nonetheless. <laughs> um, well, as she would have introduced me as Daryl Stubbs, and yes, I do have a love and a passion for pageantry, mm -hmm. and one of my goals are, is to really keep pageantry alive in not only in Grand Bahama but in the Bahamas mm -hmm. um, because it's I know we don't we, it doesn't get a lot of um, attention yeah and it doesn't get a lot of support but mm -hmm. it's something that you know we connected to that we're connected to through your own experiences and through yes. mine as well um, but other than that I am a pageant coach I am a model coach I am an image, an image consultant, okay. producer. Uh -huh. It's quite a number of things under my Several belt. Several hats. Several hats. Um, and I was introduced as the founder and the owner of the King Queens Project, which is an organization that I was started um, almost 16 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, but I didn't really brand it until about six years ago. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. With the King and Queen Project, that. Um, it's an organization that that I started to help develop and refine young men and women mm -hmm. um, through pageantry mostly. That's how it started. But then I realized that people need some help, some guidance in finding themselves and their own unique style right. and their own creativity and everything. And then, of course, again, there is pageantry. Pageantry is always number one on my yes. list. Um, but that's why it started because I found that um, a lot of people that I worked with mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people that I liked and um, would have liked to help and had great potential to do well in pageantry didn't have the means mm -hmm. and the resources to do it. Right. Um, so that's how I started almost like a little Cinderella's closet kind of thing. That's how that began. And training and coaching people free of charge. Okay. Um, just to help them. And... I even blew myself away <laughs> because yeah we we have um, quite a bit of quite a track record. Yes. With that. I um. have to say, you you you're kind of high in terms of the winning percentage over there, Daryl. Oh yeah. The people know if you want to win a pageant, I think the person you need to call is Daryl. He can make sure you're straight. He can make sure you're good. So as we dive deeper and more into this pageantry conversation, because this is going to be a big and deep conversation we're going to have, mm -hmm. and we're going to not only touch on pageantry and what you are able to do with the King and Queens project, we're going to talk about how pageantry has changed over the years because pageantry used to be something that was true entrenched in the community it used yes, to be sometimes was. the events to look forward to mm -hmm. every single year the preliminary events the final nights and even following queens as they do different things throughout their reigns mm -hmm. so when it comes to that what made you even get into pageantry initially um well pageant wasn't the thing that made me got what well, it, it started with modeling okay and just entertainment on the whole and being on stage and performing or oh, well being backstage and behind the scenes and watching this happen this all unfold my um my dad was a performer okay um he was a dancer um and he used to perform a lot at the camelot room okay over at the princess hotel and then i had in my community my mom was in beauty so there was hair shows and pageants and then my neighbors doing modeling shows and pageants and whatnot so it was just all around me i just could not escape that but i was just really intrigued by everything that happened backstage and the way it would play out on stage for the viewing audience and stuff like that so knowing the stress the hard work it put into producing and planning and preparing putting on the show and then you know everybody being able to enjoy something so beautiful um at the end of the day so it, it really started there and i was 10 years old when i decided that i wanted to actually follow suit and, okay. um, 
Yeah, in that area. Because if y'all don't know, like, me and Dara, we're part of the Freeport Players Guild. And we've been, well, for me. <laughs> yes, we're theater kids. Yeah, we're theater kids. And anybody who knows about the arts and theater and the type of community and energy that's surrounded around it, it's almost like you're home away from home. And it has such an impact not only on your personality, but also on your ambitions and your goals and things that you want to do. So I got my initial introduction to pageantry with the Miss Junior Grand Bahama Project Mm -hmm. and that pageant organization. And I have to say that that really helped me to break out of my shell. Because anybody who know me back then in Freeport, y'all know I was a tomboy. (laughs) Wearing Converse and pastry tennis and <laughs> was the furthest thing from model. But entering pageantry really helped me to step into my femininity. And, and that's what it does. And yeah. that's what it's there for, you know. So that's a major part of it for me. And it also helped me because I always had confidence a little bit. But being able to refine it a bit better Mm -hmm. and help it to be a little bit more poised and a little Mm -hmm. bit more polished. So with projects like back then with the Miss Junior Grand Bahama pageant, and even when I went to Nassau for the Theodore Elliott Miss Teen Bahamas Mm -hmm. pageant, which was back then the premier (laughs) It's right when I first heard the name, Yami. Right. That was like the premier (laughs) pageant in the country. Big ups to Theodore Silly. Still favorite hands down pageant coach I ever had and even looking at that in that community why do you feel like pageantry has started to dwindle a lot since compared to back then because I'm talking about 2011 yeah 2011 right. well around 2011 2012 would have been like or maybe the last year or two mm-hmm. that pantry was a big thing and something that people did look forward to right and it was well respected yeah um but I think a lot I think maybe what's caused it to dwindle now a lot has to do with um, people or maybe pageant directors and producers not truly having a, a love or a passion for the art. Okay. Um, but they just do it and they see it as a way to maybe make money and mm. stuff like that. So the time and attention that it takes to... Um, Embrace your queen and, and nurture your queen right. and teach your queen and develop your queen and put her out there and so on and so forth, as well as your system at the same time because mm-hmm. it's, she's representing the pageantry system as well. Um, a lot of people don't have, well, persons, I don't think, like I said, have the, that kind of passion and that love for it right. um, to do that. So it's kind of lost its way. And then, so you have people just winning titles and then they're just sitting. Right. You don't see them out in the community like how you used to see Miss Teen Bahamas right. or Miss Bahamas and whatnot. And then, you know, that would give girls or everybody else in the community a chance to say, I see this person, I want to be that person, right. or, you know, and stuff like that. So it's kind of just faded over the over the years. And that's why it's it's been hard trying to keep pageantry alive. And that's why I decided to take it into the high schools. Right, okay. You know. With um, the high school project you have going on. now, the Bahamas National High School pageant I have going on. On. And that with that too, I always believe that um, with especially with our Miss Bahamas queens, mm-hmm. our national queens, um, that being universe and world queens, we, they go off. But most of them, when they compete for Miss Bahamas, universe or Miss Bahamas world, that is their very first pageant. Ex- yeah. That's so they tough. actually have no real pageant experience right. other than that time when they captured the title. Mm-hmm. And then they go off internationally and they have to compete against women who have been doing, who, who, whose family born, they, yeah. they, out of the womb, <laughs> like you're a little Miss PV something. Yeah, that, you know, little com- toddler pageants yes, that they usually and have. And they, they, they're groomed and, and mm-hmm. you know into this um, world of pageantry so that's all they know and that's all they look forward to like so the ultimate goal is their national pageant or it is going to Miss Universe and going to Miss World we no lo- we don't have that right. like, once upon a time that was a dream yes. for Bohemian Girls yes. but we no longer have that so I'm trying to find ways to um, creatively or uniquely bring that back right. you know into our younger people um, because we do have some pageants, some that never left, you know, but it's like I said, it's struggling. Right. The pageant community in the Bahamas is struggling. And I feel that putting it back into the schools, which is the first step, mm-hmm. um, but then open their eyes or expose them to it. And, you know, and then they will then, you know, because once they experience it, for some reason, something about pageantry <laughs> is like once you put your foot in it, get your feet wet, and you. That's you, it. Yeah. Like once you, you break, once you break <laughs> those pageant feet in, like that's just the way you to stand. It, that's, that's just it. the way you to sit. That's just the way I to talk. Like it just. 
you're right it comes really really engraved in your persona and the way you carry yourself mm-hmm. so do you feel that especially with pageantry because mostly what you're talking about right now is like more like mentorship mm-hmm. so you feel that pageantry now is starting to lose that sense of mentorship where it's like you're not just holding a title i'm trying to groom yes. a young man or a young lady it it, it it has it has lost it um so that's what with the Bahamas National High School pageant is doing, you know, creating leaders, um, you know, just reminding them that we still have, the Bahamas is still, uh, we still have a, um, a level of excellence yes. that we try to do things in and so on and so forth. So that that's what I'm trying to do with, with the younger people, mentor them, mentoring them and keeping them alive, keeping the art alive. And it's not just pageantry, it, whatever their talents are, whatever their whatever right. creative Because you also do have. other than pageantry, you do modeling and other things like yes. that in terms of coaching. Yes, okay. in terms of yes, coaching, mentoring, all in pageantry, um, and I think too, just like pageantry, just like with the theater, once you start there, yes, <laughs> you, yeah, you, you, you're you locked it, in. Yeah, you, you're locked in for life. <laughs> yes, you know, and you just want to keep going and keep going and finding ways to keep it fun and relevant. Yeah, that this is that's that's what pa- that's the way um, we should look at pageantry, right? Uh, or at least to keep it going. Definitely. So, with you saying that you're introducing it in the high schools, and also congratulations on Little Miss Skyla. <laughs> Yes, Thank Little Miss, little little miss, miss Piper. Yeah, Big Little Miss to her. Big up to Mama Piper. Amazing job with her. Her performance was exceptional. And the one thing I got to say about, you could always tell when young girls and young boys are in the King and Queens project. They just have that certain, like, flair. They just have that Daryl touch, <laughs> I just call it. They just have that Daryl touch when it comes to their performance, their on-stage presence, the things, the things that they say, and also their costumes. Because one thing I could say, you definitely lead in the park when it comes to wardrobe and costumes, <laughs> when it comes to your team. So do you have Thank a team you. of people working along with you, or is this all just Daryl? I, I do have a team. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the team is required, um, and sometimes is I don't necessarily need the team, but I still consult yes. um, with them. So I, we do have makeup artist I do have an you know an on hand makeup artist I do have an on hand hairstylist and stuff like that I have a, even me I still need mentoring and <laughs> right <laughs> in terms so of what goes in, in terms of what goes on and how, and how I manage things and organize myself and so on and so forth so yet I, I do have a team and everything is cut, it's basically put forth um, the team but it's mostly whatever the concept when you come to me as a client and I put together your package and your concepts and whatnot, I do everything to suit the client, to right. suit you. And I feel, you know, I give you a chance to tell me what it is you want to represent mm-hmm. and how you want to present yourself. And then again, and then that's when I step and I was like, okay, I'm like, okay, no. That this is what, you, this yeah. what you're going to need. This will help you. You know, maybe this may be a nice, this this gown may be pretty, but it doesn't suit you. It won't do anything right. for you. So the gown will be wearing you on the stage, yes. you know. So all of these, is so much that you have to take into consideration when preparing somebody for their um, respective competitions. Mm-hmm. And then, too, you have to know the competitions because they're not all judged the same. Right. Um, they, they look for different things in yes. these pageants. And not every pageant is for everybody you have to know what's for you right so i always encourage people to do their research because most times some people will come to me and they would be like hey i would like you to train me and prepare me for this pageant and i'm like that pageant's not for you right you know they're disappointed you know but then again i have to like, i would explain to them why i don't think that pageant suits them right. or why they should go for that and so on and so forth well whereas, whereas some people would be like just let them do it for the experience while i believe in that i also want your experience to be the best one right possible you know hopefully and you won't waste people money too. right and that's another thing too and um, that's part of why the King and Queen project was developed, you know, everybody's be like, <laughs> they tell me say I'm the reasonable person <laughs> when it comes to that. Um, but I don't do that for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been able to, after so many years of doing it for so long, um, because it is a very lucrative business and it can be. And to be honest, and people won't believe me when I say this, I really don't walk away with anything mm-hmm. um, in terms of like finances. Right. Um, financial gain from this which and i would like to um but i'm just it's just not there yet because i see where people struggle and i know the struggle because right. i to myself you know having to compete and we'll get into a little yes. bit of that yes and you yourself having to yes. compete in pageants and stuff you know it it doesn't it's not mm. penny yeah it's, it's very, not pennies, very expensive you know, especially if you want to win you gotta you're gonna have to pay it's very expensive um 
mm-hmm. especially if you want to win. But um, with the King and Queens Project, like I said, I started that with having to help people, wanting to help people who didn't have the resources to do that. Right. Um, and those people are the most humble. Some of those persons are the most humble queens ever. And sure enough, they did it. They competed. I worked with them. We did whatever we needed to do, pulled whatever I could pull from my closet or whatever resources that I had, and they were victorious. Most of them, if not the queen, the first runner-up, and I'm I'm proud with that, and they're happy you know, for their placements and whatnot. Love it, love it, love it. So we're going to take a nice short little commercial break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about our personal pageant experiences, some of the things that we are seeing changing when it comes to pageantry here in the Bahamas, and have some fun jokes as well, so don't go nowhere. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jason. And I'm Cheryl. Join us here on Superior Talk Bahamas YouTube channel every Tuesday at 6 for Let's Talk. Where we talk about issues that matter to you. We try to come up with workable, practical solutions so we have more action and less talk. See you on Tuesday. Yo, what's up, Bahamas? Uh, my name is Andrew Williams, a.k.a. Cat. And I'm your boy, Mix. And we're representing Off the Bench, the number one talk sh- sportcast in the Bahamas. In the world, my boy. Uh, my, oh, my bad partner. So yeah. we cover we cover anything sports, anything sports throughout the Bahamas. We cover our Bahamian athletes. Where, wherever they are, we, and they, they're making waves in sports, we cover them. Hey, just tune in. That's every Wednesday here on Superior Talk at 6 o'clock p.m. The number, Shop. The number one talk show in the world. In the world, in the world Craig. Ready? Yes, so we are back here with Islandish Podcast with the wonderful Daryl Stubbs. And we are talking all about pageantry here in the Bahamas. We initially started talking about the King and Queens Project and what you're yes. doing here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and what you're also introducing to the high school level. So now let's talk a little bit more about that process. When it comes to finding young people or even young people coming to you, what are some of the misconceptions or hurdles you have to go through, especially sometimes dealing with the parents? Who probably don't want their child to get into pageantry. I know my daddy initially. <laughs> my parents were like, um, I'm too sure about the whole bathing suit thing. It's always the so daddy. What are some of the things you see as a. It's usually like a misconception that a lot of persons have about pageantry. Um, the first thing is exploitation. Okay. Um, they think about that, especially with the little ones. But it's how you present them. Right. You know, it's. it's it's what you teach. Mm-hmm. And the, then again, like I say, it's what you choose, which pageant you choose or which model agency or whatever it is you choose to go with. You have that control. You have the authority to say, you know, this is what I would like and this is what right. I don't like. Um, now, with, in terms of people finding me or me finding them, um, I do have people that would inbox my Instagram page or Facebook page or they may have gotten my number as a referral right. um, for something. And this is with both young men and women. But then I too, sometimes I would be in the grocery store or on the bank line and I see someone and I'm like, hey, <laughs> have you ever thought about doing a pageant or, or modeling? Or, right. uh, that I do a lot, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially with um, young men. Yes. Because um, they're not usually, the young men don't usually come looking for you to want to do pageants right. or modeling or anything like that. Um, and they it takes, a little bit more to persuade them mm-hmm. so I usually have to put on do a test shoot or something like that or casting that they can experience and then once they see themselves and they have the experience or I put them on stage at the King and Queens Project Showcase right. um, which I've been doing for the last six years then it's like oh I actually do like this this actually does work and especially when they end up getting a booking or two nice um so then they get excited about it. But yeah, I have no problem. Now mind you, I'm not I'm I'm pretty shy. <laughs> I'm actually shy. So y'all see me at talking about Listen, Daryl is like type. people ain't being shy. I don't know no one in theater I am Mike shy. who is shy. Not, not a single one of us are shy. We <laughs> play shy. <laughs> not that I'm stage shy. For some reason I'm mic shy. I don't like having to speak into a microphone. But I, I don't know, I somehow find the nerve and the courage to just walk up to strangers and ask them, would you like to be a model or have you ever thought about it? And that's where I got a lot of my my people from or when when they experience it, then they would then bring people in right. um, for that. So question, another question would be, so how many young people do you have in your program right now? In the King and Queens Project right now, active, well, Registered in the Kings and Queens Project, I have 109. Oh my gosh, Daryl, that's a lot. 109 individuals, and that ranges from ages 6 to 27. 
That's a lot. Age of six and actively I uh, active I have um sixteen. Okay. So active would mean what? Like they currently have a title or they're currently competing? They're, they're currently in, still in the process of participating in any activities or okay. events that we have. Most getting of, bookings, getting things bookings, like that. Getting okay. bookings, most of them reigning or preparing for um, their respective pageants coming up in the next pageant season and whatnot like that. Okay, wonderful. So now we're going to shift this conversation a little bit and get a little deeper into pageantry and what's going on here in the Bahamas, especially not even just on the Bahamas, on the global scale. You're seeing a lot of women speak out about their pageant experiences not going so well mm. or promises that they were supposed to receive and things they were supposed to get during their reign not happening. So with all of that happening, how has that impacted your business with the King and Queens Project? Or also, how do you try to avoid that from happening in your program? Um, well, for me, and that, that is a very big issue, especially with our national queens, right. um, with Miss Bahamas and Miss Bahamas Universe and whatnot, as we see, we've seen in the last six years, they've all resigned before yes. their give up um, due to lack of support or them not receiving any of the gifts or anything um, promised right. um, to them or, you know, or full support when they go off to their international competitions. But for me and what I try to do, and like I would have mentioned before we went to our commercial break, that um, I my pockets are basically empty right. or emptied when it comes to this, especially when it's my king or my queen, because I try to give them the best experience possible, right. leaving myself most times broke, <laughs> broke. <laughs> yeah. or, or with nothing, you know, but, but but for some reason, I'm still always able to pull it off with a lack of funds, right. and I'm, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful that I find that I get most of the kings and queens that I get are always just humble and understanding um, people, you know, because I'm able to say to them, listen, this is what I wanted for you or would like to have for you, but we don't have this. This is not happening right now. And they understand. Right. And they're okay with that. Um, and that's the next thing, too. Having to be open and being able to communicate right, these things. Right, And, you know, being transparent with what's happening and what's going on. And people respect that. Yes. Um, so I think that's why um, we, I have a, such a unique relationship with my kings and queens because I'm always they always know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, not everything but <laughs> right. just enough information that they understand yes. you know what's happening and i think they appreciate that mm -hmm. just as i would like and, and appreciate anybody being transparent with me but what's happening and what's going on and i think that's where we lose um a lot of respect for pageantry in the bahamas um because you feel like you ain't one tell you ain't one say you just want cool right people and then and people and feel like they're wasting their time and then they get disappointed right. and whatnot you know i so i'm not gonna Get your expectations up so high, right. you know, you know. And then so leave your high I and dry. Never really, I, I honestly never tell you what to expect. Right. So that there's really no expectations so that when I do something or as things are happening during your reign, you're surprised, you're appreciative or... Like my current king and queen, they're blown away every, each time something happens. Right. Um, because it's not expected. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't expect everybody to operate that way, but that's the way I operate. Right. Um, because I don't like broken promises mm -hmm. you know i don't like looking forward to things or expecting something and it's just not happening um and especially when you have to go off internationally with, yes with my we have, Lord. Yeah, our people our queens i feel that you should have i i have this thing that i would say if you want the best the world has to offer you must offer the world your best yes and i like I, that I, I go by that and i say that to my kings and queens if you read all my bios or anything that i write it's always in there and i always believe in putting your best foot forward if yes. i can't do something um to the best of my ability or i don't feel that it's representing me properly yes. um fully then i don't do it right i don't go for it and when we're going off i do everything that i can to make sure that my kings and queens have what they need to represent them be their best self because but at the end of the day they're not just representing themselves and they're not just representing me right. that sash or that banner across their chest says the Bahamas right. they're representing an entire country this entire nation mm -hmm. and that's why I still believe and hope one day that our governing parties would assist us in some way um, I know tourism does a little you know where they can but some countries have full support Yes. Um, by governing parties yes. when it comes to pageantry like they 
take this thing so seriously. Right, because you're representing the country. It's almost like you're representing us wherever yeah, you're an you go. Ambassador. Right. Wherever you go, as a king or queen, whether it's Miss Bahamas, Mr. Bahamas, Miss Bahamas Universe, the Little Miss, whatever. Some people say these are the little pageants. At the end of the day, when they go, they're representing the Bahamas. Right. Don't, no matter what the platform is, what the pageant platform is, they're representing the Bahamas. And we should always... Be behind them and support them, you know, but we don't have that support. And it's the, unfortunate. You know, it, it's very unfortunate because when, when they go off and they're on stage and they're competing, um, we're watching and we're rooting for them. Yes, yes, but we didn't really do anything. Help them get there, You know, there, yeah. like, as simple as it is, liking a photo or mm -hmm. paying a dollar for a vote, um, our people don't do that. But when it comes to sports... Oh, roll, roll carpet. Roll out the when carpet. it comes to sports, the red carpet is rolled out. ZNS is greeting them at the airports. Like, whatever news outlets. Like, you get full coverage mm -hmm. of that. But our pageant king and queens, they are ambassadors. They are raptors. I mean, the Bahamas just as much just as the athletes are doing so definitely and most and then we have a lot of people who are very very victorious and triumphant when they go off but they don't get any acknowledgement or any recognition um for that and i feel that that's that's unfortunate because that's their contribution to their country yes and that'll always be there like that's always on record and it's always on record that's something that is there something that they actually did yes you definitely know. so even shifting the conversation with that we're talking about the mentorship and things that go into pageantry because i remember my pageant experience just like how you say come up on you and say hey you ever thought about I never forget this. Colette Parker approached me. Big up to Coco and <laughs> yes, the BDT up crew. Up she approached me when I was attending COB right here in Freeport. I was enrolled. I think that was like my first semester at COB. She approached me. She said, hey, we have in the Miss Junior Grand Bahama pageant. Um, this is the intro night or the casting call night. You should come just to see what it is. Bring your parents if you want to and see what's going on. And I never thought me going there that one night would end up with me winning that pageant mm -hmm. and sending me to Nassau me winning the national title in Nassau that's right and I was the only person from a family island who was competing in Nassau and my dad had to take time off because I had to live in Nassau for basically two months <laughs> because listen no I have to tell you like Theodore Seeley that Theodore Elliott pageant that was oh yeah that was that definitely was, listen, that was definitely we top 10 that was the pageant to follow the pageant was only for like what two weeks the actual preliminary events but we were training like eight, ten weeks prior to. We had practices twice a week. We had certain shoes we had to wear that were given to us because that's what you pay in the pageant mm -hmm, package. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the same style shoe. All us get the same training from the same Toastmaster coach. So it's almost like they made sure all of the girls were at the same level. Yes, at and the same level. Right. And, and that's what makes a great comp that excellent competition right. like all of us had the same tools they told us okay this is what you're gonna have to do at each competition these are the things they're gonna be looking for and it's up to you to prepare it's mm -hmm. up to you to get the right dress listen i don't know how my daddy <laughs> find these people in Nassau <laughs> to work with me but he found the right people the right hairdresser the right this the right that and everything just lined up so perfectly for me and i'm very thankful for that pageant program because it gave me a lot of the tools i even use now with mm -hmm. being a hostess and being on radio and understanding how to do sound bites, how to be quick and how to answer a question when mm -hmm. someone asks you Being it able and, to think on your feet. Right, and not have to fluff. Mm -hmm. It teaches you these things that I've never gone to a job interview and not get the job. <laughs> and I, I have to give that to pageantry. Yes, pageantry does. It does that for you yeah. because in your preparations and you're preparing for and you're training for pageantry, you're trained for interview, you're trained for right. on stage Questions. question and answer, you're trained for media. Um, so all of these things, you know, they help you for the rest of your life basically yes. it's not just in that moment and just for that particular pageant experience but it, it stays with you it sticks with you definitely the confidence that people gain you know it's just yeah it's something you honestly can't buy and even now some of the girls i did pageants with they i see them all the time we still the best of friends even though i oh, win yes. and they lose like pageant it, bonds are yeah like, like it's are like university bonds yeah like Ooh. we've been to college together like it's our own little sorority it, it stays with you forever yes and, you, and even speaking about the current Miss, Uni Miss Universe, Miss Bahamas Universe, big ups to Sylvan E. Gray, she was in the Theodore Silver. Elliott pageant. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like she was in it and she helped us, um, a lot of the contestants in the year that I was in it, she helped us with it and 
to see her now go back to Miss Universe time after time, time after again. time it's and a then when they lift up the age limit because the age limit was 28 and last year they lifted it and she was able to go back yes. in and she won like that's a victorious and very it inspirational is. It story is. it is her story is indeed beautiful definitely so when we come back we're going to talk a lot more about the different queens that have been Miss Universe and different title holders throughout the years and we're also going to talk a little bit more about Daryl's experience <laughs> as well so y'all don't go nowhere. <laughs> Ciao. Where you going, mate? To go buy these tickets for the party tonight. <sighs> Why does boy so dumb? Tickets242.com. You know how hard it is. They sell tickets for parties, concerts, plays, sporting events, everything. You know how expensive bus is? Well, if you just buy the tickets online, they could just send you it in the email. Then you could just print it off. You know how strong mosquitoes is? Or you could go to the box office downtown with the Genesis Street Gale. You ain't scared of June Sussie. Yes, we are back with Highlandish Podcast, episode number three with Daryl Stubbs. So we're getting deep into the pageantry conversation and we're talking a lot more about current pageant queens and things that have happened when it comes to pageantry and how far it has come. And actually, honestly, the recent decline when it comes to the level of competition. And you did mention that it's really important for it to start from young. Yes. Especially when you want to go on the international stage and compete. It's definitely important to start from young. And I think that's where we lost a lot um, in internationally right. at the big pageants or the Super Bowl of pageant aka Miss Universe yes. um, because our girls our women our be beautiful bohemian women and we did have some very good prospects yes. that went off to Miss Universe over the last 20 years but they did not have any pageant experience before they received their national titles right. so you know when they got they are to Miss Universe yeah. with Venez countries like Venezuela who are top hitters and Puerto Rico and now even South Africa has, is they, upping yeah, their they are game. upping their game in pageantry mm-hmm. like South Africa is really doing it yes. across the board in all areas in pageantry male yes. and female um, internationally but uh, that just goes to show like because they now started with the, the little pageants yes. um, and though a lot of Bahamians especially men when it comes to their daughters, they don't want their daughters to be exposed to pageantry and whatnot because they say they would make them womanish. Yes, which <laughs> is out there and which stuff isn't like that. true. To be honest, um, you know, it, it, like I said, it's it's how you deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, some 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 homes you may allow your daughter to become womanish, but it's it's how you you have the authority to control. You have the how power to control goes. how far it goes. Definitely. Um, and that's why I always tell people with the little kids, I try not to do so much with them. Mm-hmm. I try to always keep them childlike, and I I encourage them even like if I'm doing if I'm training a child, um. When our session is done, I would be like, okay, where's your book or where's your little doll thingy or whatnot? I want to keep you. Yes. There. You know, I, I try to preserve the innocence as much mm-hmm. as I can um, because I don't want people to say that, oh, wait, because of their child was involved in this, this has exposed them to this and they're now right. behaving this way or carrying themselves that way. Understood, understood. Um, but if we want to have another top 10 at Miss Universe, yes. We need to have the experiences. Yes, we do. And that's the reason for having it um, start with the high schools. Because, um, I will say this, um, Chantal O'Brien, um, when she went off to Miss Universe, and she did place in the top 10, mm-hmm. which is the first for the Bahamas, yes. or even break in top 16, top 20, in the Bahamas, which is the first for the Bahamas. But we have to remember, Chantal had experience. Yes, yes. Because she competed for Miss Bahamas, like two, she won on her third go. Yes, her third for go. For Miss Bahamas, and that was an experience. And then, after yeah, a few years after winning Miss Bahamas World, she then competed for Miss Bahamas Universe, that, which is another experience. Right. So... Sending her off internationally, we were confident mm-hmm, that she in, would do you well. Know, that she would do well. Whereas we're always confident in now the girls that we send off. But that experience truly makes a difference. Mm-hmm. It truly makes a difference. Um, having experience. Yeah, definitely. And it's almost like I like how you compared it almost to sporting because it's the same thing as well. It's one thing to compete in a sports competition locally in the Bahamas but when you're on that international stage mm-hmm. and the jitters and certain things step in you sometimes take a misstep because even competing internationally as well because I competed in the Miss Teenager Universe in Guatemala during yes. 2011 yes. and being on that international stage is a completely different beast Oh yes. that's a completely different monster and my pageant was in 
100% Spanish. <laughs> Everybody spoke Spanish. It yes, was the only teenagers. there was only like four or five girls in the pageant who spoke English or mm-hmm. who were bilingual, and everything was in Spanish. The instructions was in Spanish. I had to get someone to translate. And, and having to have one of the contestants translate <laughs> translate for me. And you have to remember, this is back in 2011, so things like Siri and your phone and being able to mm-hmm. say speak into this that wasn't really a thing. And get on your phone and go onto Google. Right. No, you it wasn't to do that. 2011. Internet wasn't internet like this. <laughs> <laughs> like how it is now it wasn't the same thing so that experience like you said it was a lot and luckily I did play top 10 mm-hmm. in that but that's because Theodore Silly Theodore LED was with me every step of the way he had experience with pageantry and he told me what to expect he made sure I was trained to the T so you make sure to make sure when you have those moments to shine that you do it that you do properly it. Mm-hmm. and you know where to step you follow the routine to the T you don't go off it's all these little small things like, like you said having that experience is really really important so a lot of times in pageantry we take it for granted and think like oh yeah she can do it when she older and really like just let her try the little smaller ones Mm-hmm. See if she likes it. Mm-hmm. Then do the teen. Mm-hmm. Then do the world. Then do yeah, the you universe. Know, you just, you know, just, just, just take it, it one step, step, step at a time. Mm-hmm. One step at a time. So when it comes to things like, because even if I think back to, I think it was Anastasia Pierre, mm-hmm. who was Miss Twenty Eleven. Yes, Miss that was universe. around my year. Miss Universe Bahamas Twenty Eleven. Right, and she wore that yellow dress. That's what influenced me to wear a yellow dress. <laughs> So like it's me those small little that's, details. That, that gown, that particular, that, that that specific gown is what um it has influenced me to r- run to yellow. Right, that <laughs> as yellow an on stage or final night gown as well because it's a standout. Yes, um the yellow, especially on our beautiful melanin. It um, always pops. It, it stands out for me. Other than yellow, it, the colors would be red mm. and white. They are very bold colors, and they, the white is always elegant, but the red is it gives you a a, a fierce feeling. Yeah, like almost a lady. And then the yellow red. is like in between, you know. So mm-hmm. those are the three colors that I go to. But that gown too, I was in. Inspired by um, that Anastasia or yes, and Anastasia that gown, war. and then even because I, if I think about it really well, I feel like that was the last year Miss Universe really had that strong backing when it came to like sponsorship, sponsorship, and organizations and corporations mm-hmm. and corporate Bahamas really backing the pageant. Yeah, that's and really another funding it, and you saw Anastasia everywhere. Every you saw her to everything. She was invited. She was front row. She was in the Prime Minister's box. And the reason I remember that because that was the year also I think they opened the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Mm -hmm. Because I remember during my pageant read, I had to travel to Nassau and be there for the ribbon cutting for the opening of that ceremony. So I like how you mentioned that when it came to pageantry and pageant queens, it was those type of events where there's no Miss Teen, whatever, they have to come. Yes. Especially if you're a national queen. You were invited to, the queens were in, like, now it's almost like we have to ask to be invited to be invited to right. certain events and beforehand like you they called you right up and they're like hey we need your king and queen to be up, not king because we're just moving more, more towards the male the, the male side um, of it was it, right? always hey we need your queen to come, to, to come. You know, she has to be there mm-hmm. and so on and so forth and then even having to get them prepare them to show up because right. there's hair there's makeup mm-hmm. there's garments mm-hmm. you had sponsors you yeah. had people willing hey Fashion um, designers is your, to donate is your dress. queen attending so on and so forth I have a gown I want I would like them to wear you you don't have that anymore we right. don't have that anymore um, as even with hair and makeup being sponsored you don't really have that anymore so right. everything everybody's kind of concerned about pockets right um, so it's your director now has to have some coins right to be able <laughs> your to get these things director done. now has to have some coins stashed away somewhere to for your reign right to, to make sure that your makeup is done when you step out your hair is done that mm-hmm. you have garments because now we don't have everybody we don't have people just offering or wanting you to wear their things right which um, is kind of interesting if you think about it because if you think about it even from a social media standpoint you would think that a makeup artist, a hairdresser would be like, no, babe, I want to style yeah. Miss Bahamas. Yes, so I, I, would, wanted I want to do her makeup this. for the red nope. ribbon ball. So she nope. could tag and be like, yeah, I do the makeup for Miss Bahamas. Everybody can see Mm-mm. it because everybody can take pictures of her. She can end up on the headline of the news. That- that, like that used to be the that, reciprocity that used to be it. Mm-hmm. Uh, of it like yeah and you ain't gotta pay me so for the exposure that's why it was so successful that's why rains were beautiful right that's why the experience was beautiful because you had all of these um, 
creatives, you know, in all aspects, assisting, jumping mm-hmm. in to make sure that the queens were all on par. They were on their best. They looked the best to sit again, sit next to this, um, yes. dignitaries and whatnot. But we no longer have that. Yes, Not which in is 2024. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Mind you, you do still have a few makeup artists um, that I work with or hairstylists that I work with who, you know, would offer their right. services or you would once I speak to them, you know, it's no issues, it's no problem with doing that. But right now it's everybody's like you know, yes. times are tough. Right. Things but I are think hard. that's also because a lot of people don't realize that it just takes a conversation for something like that to happen. Some people Not are too. ang they're a little I say apprehensive or a bit um I ain't too sure. Like I want to ask but what I can say. Like everybody like oh, you said play I used shy. To be <laughs> you all too like play shy. I used to be that person. I used to be that person until uh-uh, I became don't do that. Until I became a director myself. Right. You know, and like no, you have to be a little more aggressive. I'm really not an aggressor. <laughs> I don't know I'm why. Not, Listen, me. I am still not as pushy or as aggressive that I that like that I that, like I should be or can be um, mm-hmm. when it comes to things like that. But it's like I say, I'm too. Me too. I'm growing in this as well as I go. Um, I'm still learning a lot of things about myself right. and finding some strengths <laughs> that I. Could have sworn I did not before, um, but it causes you, it pushes you, it forces you. Um, like even now, me sitting here so comfortably in front of this microphone that I've been running away from. Yeah, I know. <laughs> talk, talk on this mic. Let's go. But <laughs> it, it it does that. That's what it does. But like I said, that's why pageantry has been dwindling. You no longer have that community. Right. Um, you don't have the village we always speak of. You know. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not the way it yeah. used to be and it's right now it's kind of like it's hard like I said we're struggling trying to build it back up right um, I feel like that's the same thing with not just pageantry but with the arts and theater with arts theater even theater yes. you know that too within itself with we know how it is in, yeah. in, in our um, in our guild and whatnot trying to keep that going and trying to rebuild that mm-hmm. um, and trying to get you know more people the energy involved volunteering, and, you know, yeah it gets hard it's, it's really it, really hard but you gotta stay encouraged man you gotta hold into the yes. good fight cause it's all for a good cause so now I'm gonna put you in the hot seat a little bit and I want you to tell me your top 5 past Miss Bahamas <gasps> or pageant queens in general don't have to be Miss Bahamas <laughs> It could be Miss Bomb, Miss Universe, it could world, be world, Miss Earth. It don't matter. Oh, Give wow. me your me, top five. Let me hide my face. Yeah, uh-uh. I want to hide my face. Let me hide my face while I, I say this. I tell y'all, like, if you starting to put y'all in the hot seat, I want your top five. Oh, Let's go. Oh, wow. And don't play favorites. No, I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play favorites. Don't play favorites. Um, and I think you could use run-ups too. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna give you that lie as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> that open window. Um, for me, my pass top five. National queens and runner-ups would have to be um, <laughs> one. <laughs> no favorites. No, no. This is this not is in strictly order. <laughs> off of their their fierceness, the way they competed, the way they reigned, mm-hmm. um, and the just the bare fact that they're memorable, right? Okay, um, yeah. To this day, and that they they still have some influence on the way I train and prepare girls. Okay. Um. So that would have to be. Tommy Coma. Okay, big up to Thomasina. <laughs> of course. Um, God sister. It would have to be Celeste. Okay, I'll definitely give you Celeste. <laughs> um, f- as a runner up. As a runner up. <laughs> Daryl, don't be shy. You as a runner up, it. I would definitely go with Cherie Delva. Okay. Um, Good yes, choice. Yes, I love. Yeah. Listen, it, <laughs> I can almost go back as far back as. To Miss Bahamas is of 2002 and 2001 is so many queens that have an influence on yeah. me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you only got two more. You only got two more. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, child. Hmm. Do, 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 I don't do, do. Call the wrong names right now. The names aren't coming. The names aren't coming. But I would say Miss Bahamas 2000. Okay. Um, she's now in tourism. Mm-hmm. By the way, the, the names aren't there right now. Um, and then again, when Miss Bahamas actually got my attention would have been in the year 2001. Okay. That's when I paid attention. So the queen for that year. From 2000 onward is when I've been following Miss Bahamas. Um, but honorable mentions. 
Because <laughs> you don't say five, so I'm wondering why you why you still look like you're thinking. Honorable mentions would be like Sherelle Williamson. She surely has range. She was yes. beautiful. beautiful. And that would have been the time when I when Selvanique first stood out yes, to me. Yes, yes, but she yes. didn't make it into the top five that No, I don't year. think she made it into the top five um, that year. Oh, Shantae Miller. Okay. Um, Shanae Will- Miller's um, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shanae Willow Willow's yeah, and sister. I was actually there at the Miss Universe pageant. Yes, I'm um, okay, yes. When she competed at Miss Universe, and that was during COVID time. Mm-hmm. So you, you gotta love pageant if, if you're, you're traveling during, during COVID. COVID <laughs> where you have to wear a mask and take COVID tests and whatnot. Right. That was a beautiful experience being there and being able to support Miss Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Um, Shantae is definitely one of my queens because she... We have something in common. Um, like, I always remember when I started, when I added the kings to my organization, I had a king who was, um, he's Christian and whatnot, and he was our chaplain, and he always reminded, you know, like, if we're going to do this, and if this is something that we're doing, we want other people to be a part of it, and we want this to be successful, we have to always keep God in it. Yes. Um, so, and that's something that Sh- Sh- Shante and I, have in common definitely you know, she definitely led with that in her yeah, reign she and with led her with that in her reign like that was no secret that was not hidden like you knew who she was right you knew the type of person she was and so on and so forth so that's just always something that stuck with me um to see a queen so open and so bold right um yeah and her beliefs um Okay. Well, <laughs> Girl, I, I can't, wait. I can't, off all I can't the wait to use um, this clip to let sh- y'all know this you know, who Dara Sh- like. Chantel is definitely <laughs> this who we don't like. <laughs> the names he say. I hear him say your name, so I guess you don't make the cut, boo boo. No, we had some other honor. Like we had like um, Sher- Brooke Sherman was yes. one of my. One of, a Brooke queen has I love. the most contagious smile I have Listen, ever sme- uh, seen. If you see a smile, Earth. she can make anybody smile. Brooke, like queens that were runner-ups and then they they had another title and they represented us at Miss Earth and whatnot and Miss the other competitions yes. like um, Darnique Young, mm-hmm. um, Brooke Sherman, Corel Pinder. Like I took a liking to. Miss Grand Bahama after Corel. Yes. Um, so a lot of the Miss Grand so Bahamas many... went to Miss Bahamas Universe and did extremely yes. well. All Miss Bahamas well, were. Grand Bahama on the whole always does extremely Please well. Clean up. When, Please we go, clean up. <laughs> when we go to the national Definitely. competitions, I must say Grand Bahama is always the on one the to look top. out for. Yeah. Always the one Definitely. to look out so for. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we come back. We're going to wrap up this conversation. Dial has been fun having you so far, man. It has huh? been fun. But y'all don't go nowhere. <laughs> Flynn Dotson from Nose Witness News, reporting live from Sniper Paintball City. We're here with the manager and he's going to tell us a little about what they have to offer. Daddy, I got this at Sniper Paintball. We have Sniper Paintball, Cornhole, Mini Golf, So come on down every Saturday and Sunday to Sniper Paintball City, located next to Crosstown, where you and the family can have a great time. See you at Sniper! Alright, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Islandish Podcast, episode 3. We've had Daryl here, I put him in the hot seat, <laughs> yes, and I am did. loving this. So as we get ready to wrap up this amazing conversation, I do want to ask you, where do you see the future of the King and Queens project going at this point? Because you are doing some major, major things. Your event is turning into almost the highlight fashion event to go to here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. You're doing an amazing thing Thank with the you. young men and women, especially now that you're introducing it into the high school program. So what more could we see or expect from the King and Queens project throughout the next few years? Um, even, like, I don't know, uh, those who would have seen the last show, well, the show last year, um, that was titled The Final Show, mm-hmm. um, because I was going to take a little i had planned to take a little hiatus <laughs> oh yeah but <laughs> from anything pageantry and modeling and so on and so forth but i guess because my heart is so much in it i just could not or the kids wouldn't allow me to mm-hmm. and persons that were involved them and their parents like no mr Dow, like i need this like you don't understand I'm, i'd be looking forward to this every summer <laughs> right. um you know so just just the love for it um for the pageantry for the whole 
camaraderie, you know, them being at rehearsals and practicing and being together and all the different events and stuff that we do and the community services and stuff that I try to incorporate. Mm -hmm, incorporate. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very big on community service and building community. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do with my kings and queens or anybody that's involved um, or any organization that I'm involved in, really. I try to get anything that the community has going on and what we, I just try to get them involved as much as we can. Even with the the theater. Yes. I try to keep yard <laughs> for which I'm the the past um president for but, the but, yard but group. But big up the yard, big up to the free skill. Skill. You know, big up to Regency Theater. Anything I anything that I'm involved in I try to always keep the community, yes. you know, involved or keeps us involved in the community. But um I would have announced at the last show that on this past Sunday for the, the last King and Queen Project showcase that um you know, I, I guess I won't be able to take this break no, keep <laughs> that going. I had planned to take um, and that the the annual showcase, because it's now our sixth year this yes. year, will continue mm -hmm. um, going forward. Um, but it's not just all, all on pageantry. Um, and I've have been having to say this a lot recently, you know, because people getting involved, they're thinking it's all just pageantry. The King and Queen Project is not just all pageantry. I try to develop, like, the whole child or the whole person, the whole individual with assisting them with um, learning to be able to articulate mm -hmm. um, again to find their own uniqueness and their own sense of style um, just to, any way they can express themselves creatively because I was given that opportunity through my parents right. and through my high school right. so that's why I always tell people especially when I now speak of BNHS the Bahamas National High School Pageant it's two things that I love pageantry and school because my ma alma mater St. George's High School bup, bup, bup. had allowed me to be open and expressive in every way I could possibly be. I mean, from stepping to cheerleading to yes. dance, you know, you you name it. Every any and everything I was able to do, right? Um, in the arts or performing arts, and we didn't even have performing arts then. No, not back then. Not when <laughs> we was didn't in have school. performing arts then, but I was a performing arts student at right. St. George's High School. Um, but the King and Queen Project, especially with getting more involved in the community, right? Um, just recently, they I had them all participated. Mostly the young men mm -hmm. participated in the grand race. Okay. For the fifty first yes, um, we um, independent celebration, I yes. So I tried. You know, the girls don't always come out to yeah, when we had to do fun run walks. She was there. <laughs> Sasha was there. Yeah, she Sasha. came. Uh, pull through the girls who usually come up because they don't they hate to get up that early right. but when it matters most to them and um, which I can't fault them for um, the causes when we do the front walk especially like the ones for autism mm -hmm. and the one for breast cancer that Ray Ferguson usually yes, has yes, yes. and the one that I'm that I am assist with or I'm involved in when um, the Resilience Center does the front walk for mental health they show out yes and those those causes matters to me mm -hmm. matter to me and it matters to them so i can't fault them and they don't show up to everything right you know we still have some representation so you you would see more of the king queen project um prospects out in the community um <clears throat> now it's become a thing because now i have people contacting me because the king queen project is on somebody's application as a reference right you know so i'm like okay Okay, be, be a thing thing now. Yes. You know, the kids are putting me on the applications as references, you know, and I find that when I speak to some of these employers, they, they when they, because they ask me about the program and the organization and what it's about, because they try to figure out why it's on the application right. and whatnot. And once I'm able to share with them what it is we do and how that individual or those individuals were involved, involved right. you know, they... Blown away yeah, a little they're bit. Blown away by it. Good. You know, so I, I guess we're on to something. Yes. <laughs> we're on to something. So, but definitely look out to the annual showcase. That will definitely continue. Mm -hmm. More community activities. Um, you will see us out there a lot more. And I had I was supposed to have been taking a. I actually had retired from coaching itself. Right. Um, because I had taken on so much directorship um, roles, director roles in hosting pageants and putting on a pageant production and other um, productions that I'm involved in that I was trying to pull away from coaching. But in January, I got a call for Little Miss Mary Star, the C-School pageant, mm -hmm. where I would have worked with Isabel Swaby. Yes. 
who was victorious in capturing <laughs> Little Miss Emmett, the first Little Miss Emmett's SCA. And then again, Skylar Pye from a Little Miss Clitz Bahamas. And I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like, how do you? How do you? And because, mm-hmm. the, you know, they both won. Um, they did, su- they, and those girls shine. You know, I won't take all the credit for it because it's them too. It's on them too. You know, yeah, their, their determination, talent. their talent, you know, their intelligence, you know, and them wanting it. Right. You know, that's another thing too. We, I like when the, when they want it. Yeah. Ain't and no they're forcing hungry them for it. Nobody's forcing it. them. It's, right. It's, it's a joy working with those persons. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easy to coach. It's easy to train them. Um, but they worked hard. And now that, because they have won and they're friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have more people calling to do more coaching. <laughs> but I guess I'm now open and available for pageant coaching. 4418374. All right. You better drop the number. Let them know they could reach you. Or they you can look you. up the King Queen Project on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and then look out to what's coming up for me. Other than the King Queen's Project is, again, the Bahamas National High School pageant. Yes. Um, the first year was very successful. I saw that. You were on almost we every had- island. <laughs> I say, we oh had, my gosh. Yes, we had from Grand Bahama, we had Inagua mm-hmm. here, we had Cat Island here, we had Eleuthera here, we had Abaco here, yes. we had New Providence here, mm-hmm. the capital. Um, did I say Abaco? I think you did. Well, <laughs> just though we had a lot of the islands here participating in that, and those kids, they enjoyed themselves. Mm-hmm. And I was glad, just glad that they enjoyed the experience. It was three days. We had them here, had three days of competition and whatnot. It was a lot to take in because there, there was rehearsals and having to learn dance routines and so on and so forth, and then preparing yourself mentally to compete. Yes. It was a lot, but the atmosphere somehow was... The most friendliest, calmest, inviting. They're all friends to this day. Good. They don't let me sleep. <laughs> I've gained more children. Yes. Um, and they communicate. They communicate. They communicate daily. I mean, we have in, the, in our group. They're praying together. They they were assisting each other with coursework. You know, those are the kind of things I like people to take away from their pageant experiences. Right. You know the. Those things you just can't buy. You can't find any and everywhere. You know, so those are the things that I like most about pageant experiences. And now coming into the year 2025 with BNHS again for our second year, we now bringing on the junior high schools. Nice. Because we had quite a number of them reach out when we were advertising for the senior high schools. So now we will have junior high and senior high competing here. Nice, I love it. You know, and and another thing too, um, I was asked to bring that pageant to the capital no oh, okay but i opted i opt not to take it because to grand bahama is home because grand bahama one is home this is where i was born and raised this is where my alma mater is my high school mm-hmm. too and then we go to the capital for any uh, all the other yes. national competitions yes. all other national competitions we go to the, the capital for um and whilst it is expensive for us for, to travel there, especially if you don't live there or right. have any family or anybody there, it is costly. And I do realize that it's costly for persons coming from the family islands to Grand Bahama to compete. But they were here. Nonetheless, hopefully we do get more sponsors and get more people involved to assist us with that, especially tourism and traveling and mm-hmm. whatnot in the Bahamas here. We look forward to but. I am excited for BNHS 2025 because now we had only 11 schools. Right. Um, but out of the 11 schools, we had 18 participants. Nice. 18 kings and queens um, competing. Because um, some schools, a few schools didn't have both king and queen. Yeah, some only had um, a queen. Some only had a queen. Or vice versa. Queen. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but this coming year, we have eight more schools now on board. And they all have kings and queens. You know, I guess for some people, they needed to see how it goes yes, first. Yes. You know, with no Bahamians, yeah. you have to see how it goes first. Let me see how this plays Let me see how this plays out first before we get involved. You're right. And, um... The taste up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And our king, and I was happy, too, that the pageant happened here in Grand Bahama. Um, but the king nor the queen is from Grand Bahama. Okay. Our first king and queen, our first queen, Kenny Minis, is from North Eleuthera. Nice. Um, attending North Eleuthera High School. And our king, Stanford McIntosh, was from Abaco Essie McPherson High School nice. in Abaco. Um, 
But we did have runner-ups, uh, Bishop Michael Eldon, Journey Bannister, Grand Bahama. We did have Tabernacle Baptist, Christian Academy, Khalil Lockhart, Grand Bahama. But we also had Abaco. Boy, Abaco almost take it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Because they had King and first runner-up. I um, love it. So I'm looking forward to the next year for BNHS. That's what I'm most excited about. Um, love it, love out. it, love it. I love this because I just was recently talking about this on the radio that there really isn't a lot of things for young people to be involved in no. and to do. Other than as, sport. Yeah, if it's not sports, then it's really like, eh, <laughs> you could sing, yeah, but it's not really a lot of programs mm -hmm. and even extracurricular activities for young people to get involved in. When we were in school, there were a, there lot, was a lot of like, things Rotary, to do. Like, Rotary Rock Club was a big thing in Rotary all of the high key, school. GGYA, yep. Toastmasters, it was so but many those different things. things are still there, but the kids don't seem really as enthused about right. those clubs as those like, programs. Like we were. Yeah. Um, but I feel like this pageant program, it's because I think like most things have their time in the sun. Mm -hmm. So that might be what it is. Maybe those programs are good, but they're not appealing to young people because young people have changed have so much. Changed so much. And yes. what they see and what they're exposed to and their yeah. ambitions and desires are different it is and so something like pageantry that we thought back then oh everybody ain't into that mm -hmm. now they would be into it because now pageantry could branch off into them being an influencer or mm -hmm. being a social influencer. media this or being or a brand radio host. Or radios, <laughs> or different things like you know, that it's so many opportunities that follows or comes after your experience in pageantry yeah because you find you learn things about yourself that you didn't know before. You find this, you get this boost of confidence, you know, so you're ready to almost tackle anything, right. you know. Um, but what's most interesting pageant, with pageantry and the young people now are the young men. Yes. Um, I think I am one of few people other than Oswald Ellis who've been pushing the male pageants um, in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And um, because I do have most of the young Yes. Yeah, the pageant males, the pageant yes. kings um, right now. And I must say they are belt. complete and absolute gentlemen. I've met majority of them. They're smart, intelligent, athletic. They're involved in so many other things, not mm -hmm. only pageantry. So it helps them to be very well-rounded, well-groomed, well well-dressed. They don't carry themselves, you know, a certain kind of mm -hmm. way. And they look like a lot older than their actual years just by the way they speak and carry mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would de definitely say that it is doing some good. And the fact that you're putting it, it in it the high school is. level. Is. is amazing it definitely is and especially with the young men for most of them it is a new com a new experience completely mm -hmm. especially with some of them not ever going on stage or speaking publicly right you know and then having to train and prepare and learn these things and these new skills and whatnot it helps them you know and they they are grateful for it. they're very appreciative for that experience right. and, and that was a highlight at um the bahamas national high school pageant when we had it a lot of people People attended the pageant thinking they were just coming to a pageant. They right. didn't, uh, some of them didn't even know young men were involved. Right. And that we had a lot of spectators come to the pageant because they saw young men right. were involved. They wanted to see how this was going to go. What yeah, this was about. This what, 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 what are these young men really doing Ooh. in this pageant? You know, but and they enjoyed that. They were entertained by mm -hmm. them and they were impressed by them. And, you know, with the question and answer aspect, you know, they got to hear them speak. They had, there was a speech competition, they, you know. So it's a lot of things... A lot of things you gain from this. Right. You know, really I, guess I, I always think you should have pageant, you know, especially for people who like to do modeling. I still think you should dabble in pageantry a little bit. Right. For people who want to do pageantry, I think you should dabble in modeling a little bit. It helps. Yes. Both, both experiences help. And then even through pageantry, some people, most pageant, um, Kings and queens end up in modeling yes. anyway. Anyway. You know. Just by virtue of having those <laughs> basic things and stuff. But this definitely has been an interesting and deep conversation. I want to keep you encouraged. Please keep this thing going. Please, it is going to you. be big. I can see it growing even, even bigger over the many, many years. Make sure you all check out the King and Queens project. Big up to my boy Daryl. All of his over a hundred young people involved <laughs> in this program. Yes, and expecting over it. And I actually counted today and I was like, wow. Yeah. Exactly. So. It was today I come and I was like, how much people are really involved in this group? Right. That's a you lot. You know, when I was gathering myself to come here, I was like, wow. Yes, it is going into a big thing. So I do have to give you kudos. But that is our time on thank the show you, for today. Thank you. Thank you. You for guys me. know what's going on. It's a pleasure to have you guys listening. And thank you so much for talking with us, Daryl. And we definitely can do this again. I may <laughs> let you bring a queen a, or king a with a you the next time we have definitely, this conversation. Definitely. All right? So thank you guys for watching. This has been Islandish Podcast. Peace out.